live now. And let me, the same thing that the attendees are probably very used to hearing me say, let me wait for these settings to finish loading. And then let me come back over here and make sure that everyone is marked into this session and wait for just a second for everyone to get moved over and logged in. And that's probably enough delay. Um, so with that, all right, welcome back everyone again, just in case, um, just in case you missed this uh, at the end of the last talk, uh, there is the Zoom link there for you to uh, head over to the exhibit visit and social hour after this, uh, that, that, that Zoom link will not open until uh, seven o'clock central Europe. So the end of the current hour that you're on right now. Um, so, so you can click it, but it won't do anything. Uh, but there it is for you here after this, after this talk, and we will get a, get a great, uh, great tour of the places and spaces exhibit, but that's for after this, before that, we have one more very exciting talk in our, in our lineup today. Um, very pleased to introduce, uh, Dario Rodiguero from, uh, the Harvard metal lab, um, who is here to talk to us about some fantastic uh, uh, visualization and, and uh, present, uh, presentation work that uh, this is just a really neat project. Uh, Supervision, uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the uh, Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne, if I'm remembering my acronym correctly, uh, yes, uh, through the history of, of 8,000 doctoral theses. So this looks, this looks, this looks fantastic. And without, with, uh, without any further ado, please take it away. Okay, thank you Charles for the invitation and the very nice uh, introduction. Uh, good evening everyone. My name is uh, Dario Rodighiero and I am a postdoc at Harvard University. I am a member of the MetaLab, a knowledge design unit at the intersection of arts and humanities and affiliated to the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society whose mission is uh, to explore and understand the cyberspace uh, through its development, uh, dynamics, uh, norms, and standards. My research is funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation with uh, two consecutive fellowships, one at the MIT and the current one at Harvard. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science and a master's degree in psychology. My doctoral studies are about architecture, sociology, and digital humanities. And this allows me to interact with specialists from different disciplines in a high interdisciplinary environment. Today, I present a work of a science mapping that is titled Supervision. Supervision is a word play. Its meaning is twofold. From uh, the one hand, uh, it is about the supervision of uh, doctoral students. From the other one hand, uh, is uh, about uh, distant reading, which is the capacity of uh, seeing uh, a phenomena from a distant perspective. Supervision is a data visualization conceived as a digital installation. It has been exhibited uh, for the 50th anniversary of PFL, the Swiss Institute of Technology in Lausanne, or the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale de Lausanne in French. And its idea is very simple. It's about presenting to the visitors the university's history by visualizing its doctoral thesis. So the APFL is a federal institution in the French speaking part of Switzerland. The campus is composed of different buildings, some of which are remarkable for their architecture. And the Rolex Learning Center is probably the most representative one. It was designed by the Japanese studio Sana, and it's visible in the photograph as the rectangular building with holes in the middle, like a gruviera, if you want. But certainly, you also notice that there is a long shaped building on the left. This is the EPFL pavilions, which is the museum of the Federal Institute. Okay. 
EPFL Pavilions is an exceptional building created by Kengo Kuma with the wood. Its original name was Under One Roof because it brings together three separated spaces. One for the Montreux Jazz Festival, whose archives have been digitalized by EPFL, one for the data square and all the projects related to big data at the EPFL, and one for public exhibitions. In the spaces dedicated to public exhibitions, the director of EPFL pavilions, Sarah Kanderdine, organized an exhibition called Infinity Room. You see the poster on the right. In the moment of its 50th anniversary, anniversary, Infinity Room is an exhibition that aims to make visible the history of EPFL from different perspectives. Supervision was a project intended to explore the, the perspective of education. When I was a doctoral student at APFL, my studies focused on the visual representation of academic practice through the concept of affinity. One of the outcomes of my studies is the affinity map, a data visualization which represents the diversity of a practice in the academic environment. The affinity map is a network visualization using a collaboration metric based on publications, advising, and teaching. In addition to these metrics, the affinity map also features a lexical distance, also called co-word analysis. Using the TFIDF algorithm, it is possible to arrange laboratory according to the lexical similarity. TFIDF works with literary corpora, it allows to find the most relevant keywords for a document. Put simply, TFIDF is about the frequency of the terms. The more two labs are close in the space of the network visualization, the greater is the similarity in terms of dictionary between these labs. In the affinity map, if the affinity map aims to represent an organization through their labs and members, supervision is different. Supervision is an exploration of the language over the time. It is not about visualizing the present, but it is about representing the past by covering a much longer period of time. Okay. The investigation to create the data visualization started from the digital archives of APFL. Um, APFL collects publications of different types, such as books, journal articles, conference paper, presentation, and so on, in a system called InfoScience. Among all this material, we found it intriguing to work with the doc doctoral thesis for a very simple reason. If for the affinity map, we have been obliged to work with abstract, indeed um, the parsing of a different uh, of a papers of different provenience is very time demanding. Doctoral thesis offer the opportunity to work with a pretty homogeneous material. To have an overlook on such material, we created a very simple data visualization you see in this slide. One dot is a thesis and the horizontal distribution is time-based. A color is gray when theses are not related to a specific department, is orange where there is no abstract, and is green when we have the full metadata. Looking at this data visualization, it is a visible at first glance the frequency of a thesis over time and the lack of metadata when color is orange or gray. In addition, it is also visible when the exact date of defense is not available. During 10 years in two different periods, thesis records were just saved by year. And for the rest, we have the precise date of the year. Um, so this is a little bit new. The frequency of a thesis over the years is re represented as a circle, which allows to host the network visualization in the inside. 
It is noticeable how first theses date back to the beginning of the 20th century. Even if PFL has been officially founded in 1969, the institution was previously part of the University of Lausanne, and this explains the presence of a doctoral thesis before the year of a foundation. The TFIDF has been applied to all the doctoral theses using a string of texts composing of the title, the abstract, the keywords, and the first five pages of the PDF parsed. Parsing these five pages enables to collect information for theses with no abstract, but it even allows to collect um, abstract in both French and English. This data visualization shows a network of theses in which the metric employed is based on the frequency of words. And the arrangement is given using the TF-IDF algorithm in addition to the UMAP, conceived, especially conceived for large data set. In this data visualization, dots color stays for the department in which the theses have been defended. The color has been used to understand if the overall arrangement of the network visualization was meaningful or not. And it is pretty visible that the colors are well distributed. For example, doctoral students in architecture are grouped in the Rose Peninsula that is visible on the left side. I don't know if you see my mouse, but it's this area. Um, the gray mass at the bottom, which is very visible, um, it's, uh, it's, it's about the thesis that were discussed in French with no English abstract, especially before the foundation of APFL. This is the reason of this cluster at the bottom of the data visualization. And again, this is the problem of this uh, this morning with uh, Christophe uh, Melater about uh, the, the, the problem, the linguistic pro pro problem uh, between uh, um, different theses. So, as I previously said, the idea was uh, to host uh, the network visualization inside the circular timeline to create a unique object and to enable interaction. A three-dimensional mouse was chosen because its capacity to work on three dimensions at the same time. So the orthogonal axes are useful to move vertically and horizontally for selection. So basically it's like a joystick, while the rotation is perfect to move over time like a control knob, turn right for the past and turn left for the future. As a digital humanist, I think that one of the major contribution of the field stays in the fact that the humanists have become the designer of their own tools, entering the world and the practice of design. I can cite in this sense a book that connects humanities and design, uh, which is titled Digital Underscore Humanities, by Bordic, Drucker, Landfield, Presner, and my professor at Harvard University, Jeffrey Snapp. And uh, it has been published by MIT Press in 2012. Um, like in Darwin's theory of evolution, the design process works more or less in the same way. It aims to explore and compare different variations of the potential forms that the data visualization can take. These images show some steps and variations of a supervision. They are all different. Uh, during the design process, a lot of attention was given to the timeline, to the selection, and even the typography, of course. Um, even if a lot of scholars employ data visualization as they are provided, it is fundamental to think that the graphical forms are situated and produced by graphic and interaction designers. As a data visualization is a visual vector to convey information, communication plays a great role in shaping the appearance of data. 
This slide is uh, to mention that the data visualization is a complex object of uh, technology, which might be worthy of attention by the domain of science technology studies. Among the specialists uh, you can see in, this, in these pictures, uh, we have the director of APFL, um, Pavillons, uh, Sarah Kanderdine, the curator, uh, Giulia Bini, the designer, Patrick Donaldson, and the expert of data visualization, Philippe Riviere. All these peers uh, had a specific role in the construction of the final, of the final object, including me. And like uh, cartographic objects, data visualization are complex artifact in which different specialists work together for a common goal. This is uh, the final version of a supervision in full view. It can be navigated over time, moving left and right and makes change in the, the selector that you can see in this point. Um, the selection makes uh, active in green those theses that have been published in that period. On the contrary, moving in the space allows the users to select a specific thesis. In the example, it is highlighted Roberto Sega's work, which is displayed through its metadata. And you have, of course, the position of his thesis. And you have on the right the metadata like the year of the defense, uh, the ENAC, which is the faculty. You have uh, the title, Nuove Ecologie Alpine. You have uh, his name, uh, the author's name, and you have uh, even the, the directors of the thesis. And here we have uh, four different uh, selections, all from uh, the Department of uh, Architecture. And here I come. So far, uh, you have seen uh, the digital version, but uh, it is important to remember that uh, this kind of data visualization has been designed for an exhibition. So it occupies a space. In these uh, two photos, uh, Patrick Schwar and I are setting up the projector to find uh, the best balance between the resolution and distance of the visualization. Uh, this is a set of uh, photographs of the final installation. A vertical furniture hosts the 3D mouse that the visitors use to control the data visualization. Some information are therefore conveyed with the installation to the public. One is about the life lamp, which covers 50 years officially, but is visible how the origins date back to one century ago, the origin of IPFL. One is about the sites. Distant reading is the way to represent all the doctoral students together, all the theses together. Other visual methods, like, for example, Google search, are based on lists, which obliges to split the records in different pages. And one uh, other interesting insight we can get from the visualization is the frequency. Visitors can notice the increase of thesis over the time. Obviously, this evolution is related to the sites of APFL that augmented considerably. Uh, it is interesting to notice the number of a PhD that the institution annually deliver to the job market. The estimate today indicates more than a PhD a day. Furthermore, the visualization reading can be more interesting if the visitor is part of the visual representation. In this picture, you see Kirel Benzi, a colleague from APFL that defended his thesis in 2017. And all my work are not limited to the analysis of data, but I'm specifically interested to observe the reaction of the readers when they recognize themselves in the data visualization. In a moment in which there is an ongoing discussion on ethics and privacy of data, very few scholars are concerned in how this information is presented. 
My, works, uh, my work opens the room to a discussion in which it is the subject represented that evaluates the quality of the visualization and reflects about the production of data, especially today that scholars are invited to share their information to open data protocols. So um, this is a video, yes. This is uh, the last slide of my presentation. The animation you see is uh, the idle function we added uh, to show to visitors that uh, the data visualization was live and interactive. If uh, on the internet, the user has the habit of interacting with the data visualization, uh, the use of data visualization in museum is a field that we are just started to explore. And for example, in museum, uh, we are used to, to have uh, static artifacts. So it, it has to be visible that uh, you can interact with this data visualization. And um, in my conclusion, I have uh, three points that uh, emerge from uh, this, uh, this, uh, this presentation. One, uh, of course, is uh, the dimension of time, which is still a problem in uh, the, the network visualization. Indeed, we can create an animation like this one. We can create several pictures of different years, different periods, but it doesn't exist as something that is able to connect all these pictures. So I, I like uh, to, to investigate in this sense, uh, putting a lot of efforts, not just in the algorithm to display the nodes on the screen, but even in the way in which uh, um, networks, uh, uh, network uh, visualizations can be represented in innovative ways. Uh, another part is the part of a public exhibition. Uh, we have seen uh, Katie Borner that uh, it's, she's organized by a lot of years uh, an exhibition of data visualization. But I, I think that the first data visualization was exhibited by the moment in New York um, 20 years ago, so it's a while, but uh, uh, this visualization are, are becoming more and more part of, um, of uh, exhibition spaces. And the last one, of course, is related a little bit to, to the way in which we draw networks is uh, the, the, um, the idea to, to bring uh, the design, to bring the design process into the craft of this data visualization. And then I think it's an interesting point, uh, especially in a moment in which uh, design universities are a little bit separated for the major subject of research. And uh, you have to discover that uh, the, the integration of different skills in doing research is just, uh, it's just beautiful. Just a few moments, uh, Charles, is, if you want uh, to, to enter, I wanted to share with you even uh, the live version because it's, uh, it's, it's very different. Uh, so just a moment. Yeah, fantastic, please do. <laughs> While you're switching over, I think I can I can ask one one very easy question that came up that that uh, uh, you'll be able to to answer answer very briefly. Do you have any videos of people interacting with the exhibit in the space in the in the pavilion? That'd be really I don't know if you have. Uh, yes, not for this one, because uh, during the exhibition, I was in United States and I was able just uh, to be there for the installation. And um, otherwise, usually it's my job to observe uh, like uh, an, an, an anthropologist, uh, how people interact. And uh, that was a crucial in my thesis because my thesis is a representation of a university. And so uh, it was risky, but the idea was uh, to ask a feedback to the scholars uh, that are represented in the visualization. And this is part of uh, my, my thesis and will be also part 
of uh, my book that will be published uh, soon in French and English uh, in open access. So from, uh, from June, from June, from Metis Press Geneva. And um, this is uh, the interactive map. So it's nice because you have uh, this idle function and uh, you can select, of course, uh, here EC stay for uh, computer science department, uh, uh, SB is uh, basic sciences uh, and uh, ENAC is the faculty of architecture. But uh, what is interesting is that you can navigate so you can go back and uh, you have this feeling of a quantity and of course, when you go back, you have a many, many theses in the, in, the, in, the, in the part of in the south that is a little bit lexically detached from the rest. And um, the other uh, thing that is interesting to notice in, in, uh, in uh, the live version is uh, the length of, uh, of the selection bar. Because of course, in the past, you had very few doctoral theses. So when you advance, you have more points, you have more theses, but the bar, as you notice, is shorter. And I think it's just impressive the idea to have a PhD defense each day and deliver 365 doctoral students, I think even more to the, to the world job market. Very cool. Uh, let me let me. There's a couple of, of, of very nice questions in the chat, so let me go ahead and let me go ahead and jump on these. So uh, one from uh, from Eugenio Petrovic who asks, so what was the visitor interaction like? Did the visitors sort of immediately grasp the visual uh, the meaning of of the visualization easily, or did they need some explanation to interpret it? Do you have some captions or or something like this as well, or 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 not? I mean, uh, this, that was uh, a big issue. You have uh, even to think uh, anyway that uh, this, was, uh, this visualization was in the museum of a technical school. So people were aware about engineering, uh, data, and all this stuff. And uh, a part, a larger part of the visitors are, were member of a DPFL. So, and uh, you have to think even that all these people that defended the, the thesis in the past and were looking for themselves uh, during, uh, during the exhibition. But, uh, but of course, uh, these are new, uh, strange objects uh, to, the, to the common public. I think it is intelligent to make them simple because for example, here the, the bar chart is, I mean, uh, the evolution is visible to the very eye, but uh, uh, it's, uh, I think it's even uh, interesting uh, to push a little bit the technological boundary to, to, to ask to the visitors to do something more, something more. In any case, it was part of the expectation of the exhibition and not easy in general. Very cool. Yeah, that that uh, uh, a whole different whole different meanings to uh, uh, to to user experience uh, user experience design than than I think a lot yeah. of us are, are normally used to. That's really it's really neat. Yeah, um, but uh, you have uh, even to think that uh, now all the major university have their own museum. Even at the museum of MIT, I've seen a beautiful data visualization not related to science, but even to archives. And uh, you have uh, people working in this sense, providing this visualization uh, to the museums. And even uh, the Harvard Art Museums that was uh, recently restored by Renzo Piano at the top floor as a beautiful room with a large display that is open to new application and interactions. I have to. I have to visit. I haven't been since they redid the building. That's really cool. Um, no, it's cool. So, a uh, uh, next question uh, uh, from from Rose Trappis, who uh, says, uh, is wondering about changes in. Oh, yeah, great, cool question uh, about changes in collaboration between fields. So, can you get a, a at least a sort of rough impression 
of how, say, interaction between disciplines uh, changes over time, just by looking at sort of the proximity between the nodes at, at, at different time points, or the movements of the kind of mass of of theses over the over the over time in the graph. Uh, no, this is not possible in this kind of a visualization because uh, if uh, the the popping up is temporal, the distribution is uh, just uh, static. But of course, uh, uh, if you know the, the APFL, the new branches of, of a thesis are related to the opening of new departments. And this is the big change because when a department opens, you have even funding for uh, finance uh, doctoral studies. Otherwise, and this is very subtle and we have to thank the designer for this, when you select uh, a thesis, you, you see the, um, the structure behind, and when the structure is wider than the other part, this is uh, the ramification of the faculty. So for example, you see this one, you have certain ramification, and this is, uh, which is computer science, uh, is really in the opposite the, in direction, and here, basic science is there, but uh, sometimes you have uh, strange stuff because you see here in this case, uh, you have a really division. You have a big mass on the top right and the small mass in the bottom left. This is because uh, of course, uh, interdisciplinarity, but even because uh, uh, within departments, uh, you have a division uh, in uh, institution, institutes. Very cool. Yeah, that's really, no, that's really, that's really neat. Thanks. Um, okay, I've got another question here from, uh, from, uh, from uh, Nicola Bertoldi, who asks, uh, interested in, in knowing more about the, you mentioned the, the Darwinian nature of the network. Uh, so was that, was that just a metaphor? Say, say a little bit, a little bit more about that. That is cool. <laughs> no, that, that, that was just an idea because, uh, you know, when I was in the United States, uh, Darwin is popping up uh, continuously. And, and so, for example, when uh, I do design, when I design a logo, when I design an interface, uh, you have uh, sketches at the beginning, ideas, but then there is a craft work of a refinement of all the elements to, to make, uh, I, I don't know if I have, but you have to, to make, it, make it working. And so starting from that point, you have really a ramification from the first sketches, you have different ideas and from a, one vari variation, you have other variation and was this uh, my, my idea. So it was not related to networks precisely, but it was related to the nature of design, to the selection of your best idea, if you want. And even about the agreement with the others, because when you design um, a data visualization in a team, but it's like, uh, uh, a thesis, uh, I mean, uh, you have uh, to do an agreement with the others. That's cool. Yeah, no, no, that, that, that uh, I like, I, I like that, I like that way of thinking about the process. I actually want to pick up on that. This gets back to something that actually we were talking about, for lack of a better way to put it in the, in the green room while we were getting connected. Um, so, so on this, on this kind of process idea, so, so I, I know, yeah, you mentioned that these are, these are big real collaborative serious team projects and it takes obviously a, a, a large a large group of, of designers to, to build something that's this sort of articulated um, I wonder what your what your thoughts have been about again I'm, I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do another kind of asking you to ramble question again because I think it might be helpful um, about how to how to manage these kinds of collaborations and how how these kinds of flows between, for example, uh, uh, people on the design side, people on the art side, people on the obviously you've uh, uh, you've you've had to have I'm sure some uh, historians of the university or people with sort of hard the hard domain knowledge about what's been going on at the at the at the EPFL over these over these years. 
uh, the people crunching out some text analysis stuff. So how, how have those flows worked in your experience? Can you talk a little bit about what that's, what that's been like for you in a, in a project like this? Because I think that's something that many of us would, would like to do as well as you've done it in this, in this environment here. Sure. I mean, uh, the, this project uh, was realized uh, in uh, 2019, but of course, we started uh, to talk about the visualization of uh, the whole APFL uh, years before. And uh, I've met um, Philippe Riviera in Lyon, and uh, he's a very good uh, data visualization guy. And uh, we, we traveled from uh, Lyon to Paris together. And at a certain point, I told him, uh, we have to work together. And just after a couple of months, I, I got this uh, founding to, to, to create this map that was, um, I mean, it was good. It was 10,000, 10,000, yes, a U, uh, Swiss franc. So uh, I told him, uh, we can pay you, we can work together. And then uh, we started to, to work on the data first. And uh, I was doing the parsing. He was uh, playing uh, with the UMAP, uh, TFIDF. Uh, and uh, when we created the, the first uh, visualization, very raw, raw material, we forwarded it uh, to the designer. And, uh, for me, it was the first time uh, uh, I've worked with a pure designer that was not me in, uh, for a data visualization and was nice. And there you have just to leave a room to the creativity. You don't have to block. You have, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's one of the main rule of the management. You have to delegate, delegate, accept and uh, I mean, uh, if uh, the team is good, uh, the results uh, will be very, 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 very good. But you know, for example, then uh, we, we had this uh, good team. We worked uh, for a couple of months uh, through Slack. And then uh, just one month uh, before the exhibition, uh, we were together in Lausanne uh, to discuss, and then uh, we accelerated and we obtain uh, the, the final version. But you know, then you have uh, students around the lab. Uh, and so you ask them, uh, so look in the visualization, what you see. So it's very randomly. And for me, this is the basis of the design process. It's not the, the process of design thinking, but it's schedule for the managers. The process of design is creativity and even uh, the capacity to work with the others. And this is a very good point. That's great. No, that, that, that's super helpful. Thanks. Um, oh, a question coming in from uh, Christoph Maliter who asks, oh yeah, good, good question. Uh, do you have a rough guess on how many uh, 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 person days were needed to get this, to get this project done across, across you and the team, just to give the rest of us an idea of, of scale here? Uh, I mean, uh, for uh, to realize this, uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, it was uh, uh, three months uh, for each of us. Yes. So 90, 90, 90. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that, the, total, uh, the total is this. That's still impressively fast, actually. Yeah. Good work. Uh, <laughs> Thank um, you. Very cool. Okay, let me see. Uh, I'm going to do my going to do my stalling thing again and see if it, if anybody else pops in. Uh, actually, in the meanwhile, let me let me ask uh, uh, what I, I have a feeling. This is another very open ended question, but what were some of the unexpected challenges that you had? in transitioning from something that looked nice and was really reasonably interactive to you in your web browser, in your, uh, in your, in your own lab, to something that worked in the physical space for the person at the, at the standing at the installation? Was it, was there, was there not, was it really seamless because you always had that in mind or did you, did you come into some points of friction? And, and, and if so, what, what did those look like? I mean, uh, for that, I'm uh, very inspired uh, by the world of uh, architecture, as uh, I 
I told you I did this PhD in architecture because uh, there was no design school and that was uh, the closest one. But uh, basically for the architects, uh, it's very difficult to, to imagine uh, the interaction with people and the building. So basically, but uh, even uh, to, to the expectation, maybe now it's a little bit better with uh, 3D rendering, uh, but uh, the volume uh, of, uh, of the building is and the interaction of uh, people with the building or the space in general is impossible to predict. And uh, the same is for data visualization. And uh, I like uh, to create a public visualization because uh, yes, a browser is great. We can talk together. I can present stuff. I can share stuff, uh, which is very powerful. But uh, at the same time, you don't have uh, people together. So for example, a part of my thesis was just about the conversations you can have in front of a visualization, because of course we have a visualization saying facts and we have a visualization about the exploration. All this, I mean, at least this one for me, it's an interface for exploration. So the best stuff is coming out from people in front of the visualization interacting together. And this is unpredictable. Very cool. That's great. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a really nice, that's a really nice point. I, I like that. I like that idea a lot. And that it's a it's a kind of data that we don't well often don't. I mean, you can do kind of user experience trials or something on a website, but that we we don't normally get that kind of that kind of situated experience when we just sort of launch a website off into the world and hope that people interact with it in the way that we expect them to, which they never do, right? They never click on the things we expected them to click on. Uh, so yeah, no, that's a, that's a really, that's a really great point. Um, with that, we are, we're basically out of time. Uh, so let me go ahead and, and, and wrap things up there. Thank you so much. This is really, really cool. Uh, I, I you, really Charles. enjoyed getting to see this. And then let me uh, just say once more to everybody, up at the top of this Crowdcast chat is a Zoom link. We'll be starting there in 15 minutes. So we'll be starting there at quarter past uh, quarter past the hour for yet more cool visualizations. This is the cool visualization block of the conference. Um, so yet more cool visualizations, more, more examples along the lines of, of some of what came up in Dr. Berner's talk at the very start of the conference. So we'll see you all there in just a few minutes. Thanks very much. Bye.